Hello GED students, it's GED question of the daytime and I'm super excited about this problem um, because I like posting up problems that traditionally trick a lot of students so that we can work out uh, some common misconceptions about math and uh, fix them. And so this is one of them. So below I see a pretty simple looking equation and the directions say solve the equation for M. So I would remind you uh, that solving the equation for m means isolating the variable isolating the variable or getting the letter alone uh, that's all i'm saying here if i say to solve for m you see now if you look um, with your eyes breaking the equation into a left and right hand side at the equal sign that m is not alone um, there's some num there's a number over there with m 43 and there's a sign over there between the two of them a minus sign or a negative sign um and so i've got to get rid of that uh, before m can be alone and so that is what i will do um so the way that we get rid of math is uh we do the inverse operation when you're solving an equation You've got two sides. That means you got that equal sign, power to do whatever you want. We're, we're going to use that power there to get rid of numbers that we don't want. And so I have to tell you that this is the wrong move that most students do. Most students have a pretty good understanding of one-step equations. They know that this 43 has got to go. But they say, well, look, that 43 is minusing with M. And so I'm going to get rid of the, the um, 43 by adding 43. Uh, but that would be a mistake if you were to do that. This is a this is a bad student error. Let's talk about this 43. Think about it. If you already had 43, well, what kind of a 43 is that? Uh, look at in front of the 43 is what tells you if it's positive or negative. This is a positive 43. So if you had a positive 43 and you were to add another 43, you wouldn't be getting rid of this number at all. You'd be turning it into 86. You'd be making it even uglier. You would be doubling up the problem. That would be a bad move. Your goal is to get rid of the 43. Now it is a term. It is a thing adding or subtracting. And so you want it to zero out. You want it to come to zero. Well, how can I take 43 and make it zero out? I'm going to have to subtract a 43. Now you say, Kate, okay, but what about the minus M? We'll deal with the minus, uh, but not yet. The first step is to make the 43 go away. So I'm going to subtract 43 so that that will zero out. Now, I want to do that on both sides because the rule of solving equations is I can do whatever I want as long as I do it to both sides. So on this side, 43 subtract 43 really would zero out. This would all become zero. So I have nothing left on this side except for M. Now you might be saying, Kate, isn't it zero minus M? Yeah, but you and I ought to know by now that you take zero and you add or subtract anything and the zero doesn't do squat. So that is the same as minus M. Okay, and then this you may do in your TI-30 excess calculator if you struggle with negative numbers. But if I have 18, like $18, and I go down by 43, like spending $43, I've spent more than I have. So I'm going to end up with a negative answer. And let's see, it would be negative 2 and 23, negative 25, negative 25. Okay, great. And now this problem is almost done. This problem is almost done, but M is not yet quite alone. Notice that M still has a negative sign in front of him. Minus M is the same as negative M. And so you must do one final step to get rid of this. Now, I'm going to write out the step the long way one time because you need to see why it works but i'm just going to let you know your math teachers in your college classes will probably never show you this work so it's important to understand what i'm talking about here but what is negative m except for the opposite of m or another way we often think of it is negative one times m and so if you want to get rid of a negative sign all you have to do is divide by negative one and of course the rule of algebra is i can do whatever i want as long as i do it to both sides well what's going to happen on this side the negatives are going to cancel, and of course when you divide by 1, nothing happens, and so you just have m on this side. 
And on this side, same thing. The negatives are going to cancel. And um, when you divide by 1, nothing happens. So this is m equals 25. Now, this is my fair warning to you. This is solved, by the way. This is the right answer. M is equal to 25. But this is my for, fair warning to you. Your lazy, lazy college math teachers, I mean, mathematicians are ferociously lazy. We're not trying to do one little single step that we don't have to do, are probably not going to show the divide by one step. What they're going to do is they'll just change the sign on the left-hand side of the equation. That's called negating it, changing the sign. And then they'll change the sign of all the uh, terms on the right hand side of the equation. There's only just one number and one number. So changing the side of the left hand side, changing the side of the right hand side, and they won't ever tell you why. They're expecting you to know that when you negate the left hand side of an equation, you negate the right hand side of an equation. Okay, awesome. So this is how they'll probably skip steps in your math class. But either way, whether you show that work of dividing by negative one, or you just skip that step and go straight to the negate both sides answer, you see that m is equal to 25. Great. If you have any questions about this, uh, be sure to drop them in the comments and I'll be happy to answer them.